Hey, it's Brandon here from Pegasus. And so today I want to just talk about the impact of third party scripts, what they do to your web page, and what you can do about it. Okay, so you probably get this warning in PageSpeed Insights that says, you know, reduce the impact of third party scripts or third party scripts are blocking the main thread for, you know, a period of thousands of milliseconds. And you're like, well, give me an example. And it comes up with Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics, Facebook Pixel, um, and the list goes on and on. Hotjar, Yandex, CallRail. There's a whole, whole slew of them. And so what these third-party scripts do in many cases is they uh, allow your marketing department to uh, either retarget visitors for the purpose of having them come and click on an ad, or they uh, track where the user clicks uh, so that you know whether or not your buttons are working. They may do A-B testing, such as uh, you know, display one page for one user and another one for another user to determine you know, what works better for conversions. And there's a whole slew of different services out there. And the more you add to your page, the slower your page is gonna become. These scripts block the main thread execution of your web browser. Your web browser has just one thread of execution. And every time that one of these scripts wants to go and either modify the, the web page itself or uh, load a bunch of other secondary scripts or any number of different tracking uh, event handling, it takes time, it takes CPU cycles. And so, the, the main priority should be having your web page load fast so that your, your visitor doesn't get the impression that your web page is slow and decides to bounce, click the back arrow, back button, and uh, abandon your site. So the idea is so that your web page is gonna load as fast as possible and be interactive as fast as possible. Now, the only way to do that when you have all of these scripts is to tell them to just wait a second. So what we did when we were presented with this problem is that we decided, all right, main priority is to make sure the web page is rendered fast, even though some of these scripts have the async, which is short for asynchronous, the async attribute applied to them. That simply just means don't block the main thread while we're loading, but when we're done, we're gonna just ram our code through the main thread and block the main thread because we're important. Um, so, that wasn't good enough. So what we decided to do was simply put those scripts on hold until the code execution has been complete, the, the render of the page has been complete, and the user is ready to interact. And at that point, which is really like a second, which is imperceptible when it comes to um, you know, the user interaction. It's a second on desktop, it's a couple seconds on mobile, but what happens is, is that the, the page becomes interactive so that the user can be engaged and then all those scripts will then load in and do what it is they, they need to do um, while the main thread has finally quieted down from first applying all the CSS to the page and all the, the JavaScript for, you know, say your menus and your sliders and stuff like that. So that's what we did. That's how we attacked the problem here at Pegasus. One of the nice features of this is that it's all automatic. It's part of the plugin. You turn on the plugin if you have it in I think it's the hypersonic mode. It'll all happen automatically. If for any reason that this third-party script that you're using is not tracking uh, the way that you think it should, you can always disable this feature on a script-by-script -script basis. Anyways, I hope you found that helpful and thanks so much for watching. All right, bye-bye.